there is more to life than just having a good job, having a marriage with wonderful kids and having some extra cash in your bank account. There is more to life than that. All this will never give you happiness. Do something worthwhile with your life. This might sound weird, but that's the truth. Others never brings you happiness. External circumstances never makes you fulfilled. Happiness, joy, lasting joy that makes you smile always, that is contagious, comes from within. <laughs> so it is from you. And you know why all those things do not give you joy? What if your marriage should later fail? Oh, we are not immune to that. No one is ever prepared for that. What if at the end of the day, something goes wrong with a child? What if at the end of the day you were duty, you lost all your money? What if at the end of the day you physically something happens, you can no longer stand upright, you know, look beautiful and gallantly elegant as you've always been? These are the eventualities of life. These are not bad news. I'm sorry it might look so like, come on, what's she, what's she saying? Is she planning that something bad will happen? No. <laughs> but that is the reality of life. Life will never give you a pre-warning letter of calamities. They are part of life. They happen at any day at any, or any time. But maybe this will prepare you so that when any of those things happens to you or someone around you, go to them, give them a pat on the back, encourage them and tell them this is nothing but just a beginning of a new definition of joy and fulfillment. Because all what they think or all what they thought will bring them joy was actually not their true source of joy. Your joy comes from you, from within, from the passion, from what you are passionate about doing, from what defines you, from what makes you energetic. You know, that you can go on and on doing it every day. That is what you've committed your life to do. What are you committed to doing? What are you committed to discover? What are you passionate about? What are you so engulfed with? A cause to live for. A purpose to pursue. A passion to fight for. A mandate to defend. My is I'm committed to enhancing lives. Through the wisdom from the inspiration of the word of God. I'm not a preacher. Mm -mm. I don't do halters, as in when I mean I don't do halters, praise God, hallelujah. No. <laughs> Outside the church thing. And that's why once in a while you see us talk about the competition through books. I'm a writer. Like I said, my practical day-to-day -day life through the wisdom of God, from the word of God. Addressing our practical day lives, enhancing life's challenges, facing life squarely. Not still neglecting the wisdom from the word of God. That is my commission. And I can die doing this. Because if you've not yet seen something that will make you say, if I perish, I perish, then you are not yet living. This is weird, funny, <laughs> but that's the true definition of living. You see some great scientists that discovered a lot of things, the innovations, the technologies, the advancement. These were people that locked up themselves and were committed to a singular vision at a time. They failed, they were rejected, their friends despised them, people, you know, criticized them, people never saw logic in what they were doing, but they were like, well, I will just do it. They live and they are still living for that. Talk about all the social media apps, the, the, the very first set of social media apps that came into existence. When you talk of Facebook and the likes, when you talk of Amazon and the likes, these were men that were committed to something. Though there will always be a price to pay, there will always be sacrifice to pay. But truly, that's why you see that when they go down today, they'll find their way back up. They'll find their way to rise again. So, 
It's not just about having some small cash in your bank account that you think that's a true definition of life. I think you, I should remind you that even if you think you're a millionaire, yeah, you have some millions, what you think is your own treasure is another man's lunch bill. In fact, maybe breakfast bill. <laughs> so that's life. But passions weigh the same in the world. Even if yours is just to fight a disease in a rural village where they don't have access to technology or the sophisticated medical facilities, yours might be creating, I don't know, the next innovative, I don't know, skyrocketing, anything, anything. As long as these are visions and mandates that are beyond you, that add value to humanity, forget it. You are there. Every one of us might not get to the level, but I just want you to know that find something what we're doing with your life. We all know people around us, or we've read once in a while, you might have heard a story of a lot of even physically challenged people that later broke barriers, they broke through the glass doors, glass ceilings, and they achieved milestones in their existence. Even in the Christian world, we have Fanny J. Crosby. The, song, the hymn writer, she has written more than 100 hymns in, in the body of Christ. Popular hymns. Popular hymns. You can check that on the internet, Fanny J. Crosby. But this was a woman that was blind. But she was committed to a cause. And these are the things that will keep you going even when life should throw you down. Because they define you. They are from within. They are independent of the negative or positive circumstances around you. My question to you today. What are you living for? What is that subtle passion? Yours might be as little as helping the whole people around you. I think I wrote that in one of my books. The Mystery of a Virtuous Woman. Yours might be as, as, as tender as teaching the, the children in the church the Bible, but in a different and uncommon way that is fascinating even to those toddlers. Yours might be just animating Bible stories that even with ordinary pictures, teenagers, kids will grasp the understanding of the word of God. Yours might be dissecting theories into simpler stories. You know, what you committed doing. These are things that keeps you up every day. You want, you're eager looking forward to the next one. You're eager, you're, you're passionate about it. These are things that gives you joy. They are the true riches of life. They are the true source of joy. Well, marriage can be your own source of joy. But I can assure you, you will live with mood swings. Having kids might be your own source of joy, but I can assure you there will be a time one of those kids will disappoint you. There will be a time one of those kids will look back at you and say you are the worst parent I've ever seen. <laughs> they do that. Well, I think you also did that when you were young. There will be a time when your best friend will look at you and betray you. They are not new. It's they, they've been existing ever since Hades. There will be a time you will be thrown out of work and you will feel like having the ground open up and swallow you. What will you do at this moment? At those times, it will be difficult to keep forging. That is why you see most times a lot of people never come out of that. They fall back into the negative lifestyle and a lot of things, a lot of mess. From one problem to other, they lack motivation, they lack the zeal to move on, they lack the zeal to redefine their life, to start all over again. They lack the passion to start something else and stay committed to a curse. I want you to go have a time out, brainstorm. Ask yourself that question, what am I living for? Are you only assisting? Life is more than just having kids, you know, having babies and having marriage and just a good job. All those things are stand goes. Okay, what if when you get retired? So, what if when all those kids are out of the house? Now, let's stay optimistic. Those kids, they are now married. 
Would your life be empty? No. Is it at that stage you now start asking yourself, what am I living for? I bet that might be too late. True joy comes from living a life worth living for. It costs what fighting for. As I am, come on, if that comes tomorrow, I'm happy. <laughs> because I'm ready for it. I'm ready to die for a passion. To see people fulfill their destinies. To see people discover the hidden treasure, the beauty of working with God. So if I perish, I perish. Don't say it's easier said than done. A lot of challenges, a lot of setback. A lot of times you might have, you've been thrown into fullness of affliction that want to make you reject God. But you know what? I'd rather have Jesus than the riches of the world and its base. I may not have everything, but I glow and grow in the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. That might be your testimony. That even when life throws wind and blows at you, you are only down for a while. Then like, come on. This disappointment is not the end of my assignment. I need to keep moving. When you have that, you will keep growing. You will keep fighting. And I will be the word for today.